So here we are in, in the files that I've extracted. You can see the DB schema, a couple other files. What I'm really looking for is the VCSA XX installers. Uh, there's the CLI installers located here. I'm actually gonna use the UI installer just for, it's more visual, right? <laughs> it's more interesting to look at. So we have the three different operating systems that are supported. We got Linux 64-bit, we've got Mac and Windows. Uh, there's the Windows right there below, locales. We're gonna use our Mac installer app. I'm gonna go ahead and double click, open that. I'm gonna go ahead and go full screen. So you can take a look at, at some of our options here and step a little so you can see these. So we have install, upgrade, migrate, and restore. Incredibly important to me that you know that through the installer, we can do the upgrade and the migrate. Migrate from an existing vCenter server windows to a vCenter server appliance. Now that migration tool, huge deal for some of you out there. This is its location, it'll walk you through the process. Below that is restore. If I back up my vCenter server appliance files, I can restore it by using this application right here. So really big, uh, big time applications on the installer that I wanted you to be aware of. But we're not there, right? <laughs> this is not why we're here. We're here for the actual installation. So I'm gonna go ahead and click install here. And then as you can see, it's a basic wizard. And it's a wizard that we've seen in our careers our whole lives. It's gonna show you what we're gonna do. It's gonna unpack and deploy the appliance for us into a virtual machine. We're gonna accept the license agreement, but only if you read every single word. You gotta read every single one. So uh, pull up a pillow and a nice blanket and get started. Next, we're gonna go with our embedded platform services controller versus our external platform services controller. Remember, I talked about that distributed installation along among uh, a few virtual machines instead of a single virtual machine. We're gonna go with embedded here, but if you were going with the external platform services controller, what I'd like you to do is go in order. And the order is platform services controller installations first, and then your vCenter server last. So we're gonna go with the embedded in this case. We're gonna click next. So it's asking, where are we installing this? Let's uh, take a look. I believe 202 is open. Try that. And then I'm putting, the password I'm putting in right now is the host password. So the host password right there, and it, ah, correct. Well, it's giving us a certificate warning. Do we trust this particular host? Yes, we do. I know that host well, configured it several times. And now your VM name. What are you naming your vCenter server appliance as a virtual machine? We're gonna call this our lab, VCSA, vCenter server appliance. Now in your environments, this is going to represent a vCenter server domain. So you would name it something important, your administrative domain or something like that, and then identify it as a vCenter server appliance. Now the root password we're putting in right now below this is not to enter the vSphere web client. This root password is to access the vCenter server appliance itself for configuration, which we'll show you in a little bit. But it's important to remember that it has to be a complicated password. So that is one number, one symbol, one uppercase, and at least eight characters. And then we're gonna confirm it. I call this the fancy passwords. I'll put in two fancy passwords. As long as they match, it'll go through. Now here's the deployment size we talked about. We're gonna actually choose the size of your environment. Now, scalability comes into play here. If you on, are on the border of a tiny environment, go ahead and bump yourself up to a small environment. It is much easier to pre-plan than it is to fix. And what is it, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure or something, some statement like that. That is especially true in our IT environment. So plan ahead a little bit. I know I am all about efficiency within a virtualized environment. But in this case, if you're gonna scale, if you're, if you're close to scaling anyways, Go ahead and make that leap. This is my lab environment. This is just a demonstration. So I'm gonna keep it at tiny and the storage size, I'm gonna keep it default. Again, err on the side of caution here, if you can. Now we're gonna select our data store, which data store we're gonna use. And if possible, do we wanna enable thin disk mode? 
Now thin disk mode means we're going to go within our boundaries back and forth. We're going to expand as needed up to the boundary we set for this particular virtual machine. But the part we're not using right now, we're going to let other people use. Uh, we'll talk more about that when we get into actual thin disks, but it's, it's like a flexible allocation of storage. And whatever I'm not using, I'm going to give to somebody else. Uh, so now we need to pick our network, our VM network. So what subnet or port group you're using. Our assignment, static or DHCP. Our family of IP addresses, that's really important. If you're using IPv6 here, you should use IPv6 almost everywhere, except maybe in your virtual machines. So the system name, we'll call this VCSA 65. We're going to use the IP address of 10.0.0.0. .0 .0 to 24, I believe, subnet mask length, zero slash 24 network, our default gateway 10.0.0.1, DNS servers 0.0.1. Okay, now obviously that's gonna be different for your environment, whatever your network settings are for your VCSA is what you're gonna put in here. We're gonna go ahead and click next. Nope. System name, invalid, fully qualified domain. Missed that part. I was supposed to put in the fully qualified domain name. I just went with the IP address there to simplify. So here's our deployment details. It's going to give us all our information for this VCSA. And then once we are done, we're going to go ahead and click finish. And we will have completed the installation of our vCenter server. All right, so we finished our initial stage one deployment. Now we need to actually configure this vCenter server to be our management service. So we're gonna go ahead and click continue here. And you're gonna see that we're now on stage two. This is where we're setting up our actual configuration. So I'm gonna go ahead and click next, where we're setting up our vCenter server appliance. Now, time synchronization is incredibly important for those of you who know Kerberos and the five minute problem there. If you have a five minute skew, authentication will automatically fail. So it's important to have a centralized time server that keeps track of things for us and syncs up for other servers. Now we can synchronize with different NTP servers. They could be internal. Uh, you could have a stratum level of zero, uh, one if you're, if you're hooked up correctly. But usually we are pointing to an external source to a server in our environment, and then that server is the one that disperses the time. So then I would put the IP address of the NTP server here, and that's what we would use to access it. We could use SSH to connect there. But in this case, for my lab environment, I'm just going to synchronize up with the ESXi host. Not recommended in production, but definitely okay for your lab. So I'm going to synchronize there. We'll go ahead and click next. And then we have our SSS domain, uh, SSO domain. This can be anything you want. The default is vSphere local. It does not have to match your, your actual domain. So uh, if it's onlineitcamp.com or whatever it is, it doesn't have to match that exactly. In this case, we're just gonna leave it at the default vSphere.local, but this is the domain for the single sign-on server. Uh, the username is administrator and then the password. This username and password, unlike the ones we were using previously, is how we're going to access the vSphere web client. So I'm going to go ahead and put in a password. Again, this is one of our fancy passwords. We want to use a full, uh, eight letters. We're going to use a capital letter. We're going to use a number and even a symbol to make sure that it's complex enough that people can't brute force our passwords. Next up, we are going to confirm that password and then we're going to go ahead and put the site name. This is important if you're using linked mode to link multiple vCenter servers together for your sanity, right? So you don't get lost in your own environment. I've been, uh, I've seen several data centers that are extremely large and those data centers have multiple vCenter servers inside of them. So you want to make sure that it's easily identifiable. In this case, we are a lab. I'm going to hit next. It's saving our parameters, and then it's going to ask us if we want to join the customer experience program for VMware. If you join this, what's going to happen is it's just going to send information to VMware directly 
so that they can take a look at what's going on in their environment. Because this is my lab and because I was already in the beta program and they're tired of hearing my name, I'm gonna go ahead and not enter the uh, customer experience program. They're like, oh no, Russ is submitting something else. No, it's just fine. So uh, in the end, we're gonna finish up with our configuration. You can see that it's 224 is where this is gonna be reachable. This is our vCenter server. And if we're accessing this particular vCenter server, that's the IP address we're gonna put inside of the browser. We look through these details, make sure it's okay, SSO is cor correct, everything's correct in our environment, and then we click finish. You will not be able to pause or stop the install when it is, click okay to continue, boom. Now the install is taking place. Now, I'm not going to make you sit here and watch this progress bar, so I want to thank you for looking at this installation. A lot of people don't take the time to go through this installation, so I'm glad you stuck with me. I'm glad we were able to do it together and give you some idea of how it's put together.